A while back I made a tutorial on how to set up a sparse disk and I did some things wrong and I, I want to set the record straight. So basically what I want to do here is I want to explain why you want to use a sparse disk when you're using, when you're editing in Final Cut 10. So here's the deal. It's for better file management, pure and simple. When you get to the end of a project, um, having a better sparse disk makes it easier to manage the the task of archiving a project. It makes it easier to make those projects be more portable, to be able to move them from drive to drive or computer to computer. And it also makes it a, uh, gives you the ability to open a Final Cut 10 project across a network. So that's why you want to put a project on a sparse disk. So let me explain exactly what I mean. Okay, to create a sparse disk in Final Cut in uh, Mac OS 10. What you want to do is you want to go to the spotlight here and search for your disk utility. Okay, your disk utility allows you to do all kinds of things, not the least of which is make sparse disks. Come up here to the file menu, go new blank disk image. Now you're making a disk image, but we're making a specific type of disk image, and it's called the sparse disk. So I'm going to select the drive that I want to put it on. I'm going to give it a name, and I always do things the same way. Today's date year, month, day, and I'm going to call this FCPX Setup. Now I'm going to copy that. Now this would normally be the name of your job. I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use it in a few places, not the least of which right down here. I'm going to paste it in. So this is the name of the sparse disk image, and this is the name that the drive will look like when you launch it. So I'm going to paste that there. Next, the size. The size is a little tricky because it's hard to make them larger than what you set aside, but you don't want to make it too big. But the beauty of a sparse disk is if you were to make, say, a 20 gigabyte hard uh, sparse disk, but only put a gig of data in it, it's only going to take up a gig on your drive until you put two gigs, and then it's two gigs or three gigs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go custom. I'm going to make this in the realm of gigabytes, and we'll make it, say, 10 gigabytes. And click OK. The last thing I need to do in this menu is come down to the bottom. Image format, go up to sparse disk. Once I click create, it is going to create that sparse disk on my portable drive here. So I'm going to close the disk utility. So here's how this works. This virtual drive lives on this physical drive. This virtual drive acts just like a hard drive. Now why is that important? Like I explained, when I open up that virtual drive, I get a folder. That essentially acts like the root of a hard drive. And the reason that's important is when you start a project on an external drive in Final Cut 10, it is going to create two folders. Now, I've explained this in other tutorials, but basically it's going to make a Final Cut events and Final Cut projects. Now, I used to teach that you could pre-build those. I've since learned that that's a problem, and you should go listen to my apology video if you want to hear why. So the next step I do is I open up my Final Cut 10 template. I put this guy here. And basically, I'm good to go. At this point, when I start Final Cut 10, it's going to see this drive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an event and a project. And I'm going to point it at my new drive. It, that's very important. So I'm going to sele select here and say new event. I will then give it the name of my project. And I will come down here and I will say give me a new project and I'll call this say for example um, my client's name, the show name, I then give it the element name like you know show open and I give it a version number. Now by doing that I have put a project and an event on that sparse disk. Now watch when I come out to the finder, boom, events and projects. I like it in list mode, com uh, command two. So there's my template project. And there, uh, now this right here, this is just where I store all my files, all my After Effects and my Photoshop documents and my PDFs that clients give me and EPSs, et cetera, et cetera. I've explained this a million times in the past. So that's where I put all my stuff. This is where Final Cut puts its stuff in the events and projects. So that's the basics of how you start a new Final Cut 10 project using a sparse disk. Later.